This is PM Express. My name is Martha Krenzel Aqua. Today we are, we are talking about flood and fire. The past 24 hours has been very devastating for many, many people in the capital because there was a flood and there was an explosion. Hundreds of people have been affected. We are here to talk about how far this has gone, the impact and how we can move on from here and make sure this doesn't happen to us again. My name again is Martha Krenzelakwa, and I have in the studio with me Derek Eko Sam, who is my colleague who covered the fire explosion first and came back with the first report yesterday. And then I have Nana Yawakwada also from the Bureau of Public Safety to tell us what we can do to make sure that we don't suffer this fate again. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Let me start with you, Nana Yaw. How much of this have you seen and heard? The flood and the fire. Well, I'll tell you, I had a call last night, um, I mean, early this morning, around 1 a.m., from a radio station wanting me to comment on uh, what is happening. And I asked, What is happening? And then he told me, In fact, when he did, I, I did not grant him the interview, I had to decline. Uh, but since then, I could not sleep until now. I've been monitoring the airwaves, looking at footages, uh, communicating with our officers across the country. And it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. Unfortunately, um, there's a certain level of anger and uh, despondence within me because I think that this is a recurring problem that as a country we have failed to tackle. What hurts me most is I have no doubt in my mind that the international media is going to pick this up and it's a blot. They have already. Uh, it's all over. And it's a blot on all of us, our competence, whatever we know, whoever we claim we are. I think that um, as you know, looking at the status quo, we should all begin to have a deep refle reflection and say that never again. We must begin to hold people accountable for their actions. And I know when people talk like this, when you say, let's hold people accountable for their actions, the first person we all think about, I mean, person, collective term, is the government. But I'm talking about holding governments, holding state agencies, and holding um, citizenry accountable and holding the media accountable. Um, maybe as we progress into the program, you would appreciate why I'm taking the position that I have taken. For me, I think uh, wherever or whoever heads NADMO um, should really be looked at again. It's time for the appointing authority to look at whoever is heading NADMO Again, I have no idea how, how experienced, how experienced is that normal. person is and with what kind of team he's working with. But it hurts that we live in a country where we have a meteorological service and this can go, it can take us by so much surprise. It's, it's not acceptable. You know, we have the weather reports on almost all the... Um, TV networks at least, but we rarely pay attention to that. I don't, I don't pay attention to that. Well, so um, I don't see, Met Meteo may have warned mm -hmm. that there is this going to happen. We, we should look out for it, but as to whether people paid attention. Yeah, tr thing. truth is, Meteo, Meteo is on TV every day. I mean, if you watch most of the TV uh, stations, uh, part of their news bulletins, and as to whether people are paying attention or not is another matter. But um, we have a state agency that is serviced by the taxpayers' money, which is supposed to um, highlight on some of these things that are likely to result in disasters. And they are supposed to highlight them, get down to the public, announce it, throw more light on it, and make people aware sometimes we go to the extent of creating evacuation camps. And to the extent that the NADMO, I mean National Disaster Management Organization, did not, or not to the best of my knowledge, did not set up any such thing 
as we sit here, we all don't know the evacuation map that NADMO has. We have no idea. If you go to NADMO website today, you will have no information whatsoever to some of these things. NADMO keeps we saying should... it's not resourced enough to do this work. Yes, but I mean, who, who pays NADMO? If you are not resourced to do the work, why, what work are you doing for which you draw salaries they are every managing, month? They are managing the little they've been given. And where is the little? So because I can't be, even access so an evacuation that. map of Accra. I don't know where is a safe place if people call my organization today and say, Bureau of Public Safety, our community is coming under flats. Where do we go to? I'm at a loss. There is no evacuation map. Well, if there is, it's in somebody's room. But is that how they're supposed to work? So whenever state institutions say they are not resourced to work, I think that state institutions should be closed down because they, you have no business staying there, drawing salaries monthly, and not doing what you are mandated to do. Okay, so you think NADMO could have done much more so Absolutely. to mitigate this um, Absolutely. Event. They could have done so much more. I mean... Um, that's not to say the meteorological services always get it right. But look, it's better to be safe than sorry. If the meteor services say that we're going to have 48 hours of rain, I don't think if NADMO puts in a public service announcement with the media houses, they will decline. I have, I have my doubt. Probably you are in the media. You can tell me how you treat public service announcement. So if people knew that the whole city is going to come under rains for the next 48 hours. Even if you don't advise people on what to do, some people are going to stay home. Yes. I mean, I was coming, I was seeing how the streets were all empty because of the footages they've seen and all that. So it's very important that we, we do things like this. The NADMO can put in a public service announcement. I mean, these um, monthly... Um, clean up exercises they do. National sanitation. Yes, they've, they've even gone ahead to record a commercial. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if I should call it a commercial, but an advert, a jingle that they play all the time. So why? We are in a rainy season. First of all, all Ghanaians must know if you are living in Accra, you, there are chances of 60 or 55% chance that you might be affected by rain, by the rains. So X, Y, Z is what you should do. And as it gets closer, you make your point much more forcefully for people to be able to, um, uh, as it were, comply Prepare or as it, uh, follow, follow said directions. Mm -hmm. It happens. This is not new. We are not preaching anything new. I did not have to go sit in a classroom to be taught this. These are basics of disaster management. So we've got the basics. basics. Wrong. Maybe the basics we've got it wrong. Somebody is sitting there drawing salaries and thinking like you and I, waiting for the thing to happen before he comes to tell our stories. Okay. The fact, the issue of um, lack of logistics is an issue to be tackled. But what has logistics got to do with placing a public service announcement? It will cost you nothing. It will cost you nothing apart from the pen and paper or apart from the email service that you pay. What has it got to do with it? So how much is it going to cost NADMO now to go around the streets of Accra packing dead bodies? Would you, would you recommend that someone is held accountable there, now well, I, I responsible think, I um, think for this at NADMO? Yeah, I was telling a radio station earlier that the issue is that complicated. It will not be very, very fair to call for the head of anybody, but it will be appropriate for the appointing agency to look at who he is putting where. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Because, yes, I mean, if people were disciplined enough, they were not littering the city, and if AMA was arresting people if they have to, mm -hmm. or if um, people who cited uh, structures in waterways were not given a temporary permit to cite them, they would not have cited them. If we were doing a regular maintenance of our drains in the, in the, in the city, mm -hmm. we, okay. so it's a, it's a whole, it's a chain of events. And okay. it's difficult to say Afro Vanderpoy should go or um, Nadmo Head should go or someone else should go. We, it's a chain of events that has mm -hmm. culminated in where we are today. Mm -hmm. My worry really is that we will sit here today and talk about this. But... If the media house is as big as yours, we just place one intern on this subject that we want to see 
this thing, this situation improved next year. So follow through. Let us see what is going on in Accra regarding the drains. We have drains as big in Accra that saloon cars could drive in. Are you aware? Are you aware of that? Yes. There are drains, that underground drains that saloon cars could drive in. Mm -hmm. In this country of ours, all okay. those drains are blocked. And so when the water comes and all those pavements, you see beautiful pavement, it comes at a cost. Because once you do that, you are now making the earth impervious. So water must find its way. And here's the case, the drains are blocked, so they come out again mm. and become a menace we'll, to we'll all of us. We'll come back and talk about this, these inappropriate drains or um, drains that are where they are not supposed to be, I guess. I saw the one at A Lang where five people died, and I have my issues, my layman's issue with that drain because it's supposed to... Where... <laughs> Wait, anyway, wait. <laughs> it's at a line. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you about it. Then you tell me if I didn't see right or okay. my opinion about it is wrong. But I call. How are you doing? I'm fine. After trampling over bodies, mm -hmm. dead bodies, to cover the fire at the um, filling station. Mm -hmm. I'm You're fine. Back here. Yeah, I'm back here. I'm fine. Uh, I'm not in the best of moods because I'm a little bit saddened by whatever happened. Um, we, or personally, I think that it's something that could have been avoided, but well, the harm has already been caused. I'm saddened and um, I didn't really feel the effects of everything that I covered last night up until this afternoon when I was coming back to the office and I was very teary-eyed, remembering all that had gone on last night through till this morning. Tell yeah. me the challenges you went through. How well, difficult I, was it? Did you, did you look at it as just um, another assignment you were covering or you had to put on some special skills to be able to deliver this? Well, I had to look at it from both sides. One was an assignment I had to cover. And then secondly, I was also looking at the safety of the other people who were out of their homes because um, around that time, I already had calls from home not to come home. And that wherever I was, I should stay there because they felt that being in the office was the safest option I had at that particular time. I went first to a junction close to us here at the office, the Abbey National Junction, and the whole place was submerged. You could realize that some saloon cars were actually lost in the water. You couldn't find them anywhere. I, I, I spoke to a couple of people who said that at that particular time, all that they could do was just abandon their vehicles and just mm. take their keys out and rush out because their lives were more precious to them than their vehicles. So they left and then they went out. Then I had to go to the overhead because when I was reporting from the Abbey National Junction, I could see some thick smoke coming from somewhere. So I had to trace the smoke and look at where it was. Now I get to the overhead, overhead and I realize that have to wade through water, wade through the flood to get to the scene of the fire. At that particular point in time, with, together with my cameraman, David Ankoma, we do did, we did know what just came onto us because the other members were with us just like, Eko, Ankoma, be careful. We are like, don't worry. God is in control. And God indeed was in control. We had to just scale some barricades and just had to make do with the help of some You didn't think people. about yourself? No. People were dying. You exposed yourself to yes. danger. People were dying. We had to let people know that this was what was happening. Because even the fire service tracks were stuck. It took David and Kumar's help to actually direct them to where the inferno was. And that was how come they could put the fire mm -hmm. under control. At that particular point in time, we're not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about the country and no, no, other people. Was that right? He was thinking about <laughs> the country and he ignored, quote unquote, his own safety. Was that right? Well, um, that one is a moral question, and <laughs> it's difficult to answer. Um, but I what could he have done at that point? Because I, mean, I don't remember him the, leaving the office with any safety gear. Yeah, the natural inclination is a survival instinct. And okay. at the Bureau of Public Safety, we advise that you follow your instinct of survival. But when people place their, their safety, uh, you know, um, in the secondary gear and place the country in the first gear. I think there are people who do that for us every day. Um, I mean, they want to die for the country. When people go to war, they virtually have signed their death certificate for the country. And so to that extent, morally, is, is okay. But um, technically speaking, uh, from the safety point of view, I think that um, we see that. Uh, I, I was in Italy uh, last year, somewhere in September, 
and there was a demonstration. All the demonstrators were wearing helmets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they were Don't all smell. wearing helmets. And Not I'm like, here. wow, look at this. Demonstrators in helmets because they know the police is going to fire tear gas. Tear gas are not coming in rubber. <laughs> um, how do you call it? Rubber um, containers. They are coming with hard metal. So they had to take actions to, as it were, secure their head. So it's important that at such occasions, when you are going, you get the appropriate gear. Mm -hmm. But here again, it's not a new spectacle. Because mm -hmm. I have been at fire scenes where the fire service themselves have come without appropriate gear. Mm -hmm. In one case, I have had to draw their attention to actually forget the fire and come and get appropriate respiratory marks before they proceeded. And thankfully, the, the commander then, the, the one who was in charge of the command center, agreed with me, drew his men back, and until they were provided with appropriate uh, okay. protection. OK, cool. So what did you see wrong when you got to the fire scene? What did you see wrong? Now you're just going to cover mm -hmm. a fire you are not prepared for. for. You don't have any gear to protect you. And at a point, you were telling me you had to ask people to move away so the fire tenders could go to the um, scene of the fire to put out the fire. Yes, the fire service tenders didn't know where to pass. So we had to actually find a way for them. They had to maneuver their way through the area around Mr. Bix. You know the construction is ongoing at the site, and so it was difficult getting a straight route to the place. They have to, they had to maneuver to get to the place, and they also had to make sure that people were not too close to the fire. So we placed the people at about 100 meters away from where the inferno was. Now getting close to the fire, I realized that the place is ablaze. Then I realized that I had to be safe. So <laughs> after walking through the water, I think the best thing I did was that I didn't take off my shoes. So my, my, my footwear was on, and then I had to wade through the flood to get to the place. You get there, and the fire service men tell you to stay back and let them do what they can do first before you can also go there to get some shots for viewers. And at that particular point in time, I was like, this could have been me. Because even as I was walking through the flood, I didn't know what was going on beneath my feet. I could have fallen into any drain, mm -hmm. and I would have just ended up like anybody else. But you, you just couldn't know what you had to do. You had to make sure that you get the news for them. And whilst getting the news, you also had to make sure that you were also safe. A, a lot of things were wrong. And I think that most of them have been spoken about already. First and foremost, anytime there's a flood, the safest place is not a fueling station. The fuel station is not the best place to be. Because what happened was that the water mixed with the fuel. And then when the oil was up on the surface of the water, uh, the generator somewhere just sparked. And that was it. So all around them, people who were, who were stuck in their cars waiting for the water to recede or submerge, and then they would go home, were all stuck. You get out and you are confronted by fire. So they saw death come in, but there was no way they could prevent it. Wow. One key concern. <laughs> the place to seek for shelter when you, are, you, found you, you find yourself in this situation. There is flooding. There's still rain. <coughs> you, there's traffic congestion in town. So you want to take... A, a break somewhere and wait for the water to recede and then you go home. Well, I, I, are, wish, I wish, I, frankly, I wish it was easy for me to say move to a park. A mm -hmm. park because usually in, in such circumstances the parks are the best place. You are okay. away from electricity. You are away from maybe reptiles that have because of the rivers coming up and all this, you're away from dangerous materials running underwater with speed and all that. But unfortunately, how many parks Do we have are, parks in the that's city? That's the point. We've sold all, how the many par we sold the all of them. Skyscrapers. Yes, a, a year ago, we, is it a year ago, we took a restaurant in Tema to court because their facilities were inappropriate. They were not meeting the required standards and the neighborhood were complaining. We took them to court after about six months of battle. Um, well, forget the, the judgment, but we, we, we won the case. We were asked to go and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But in the course of the legal proceedings, we established that where that restaurant has even been sacked was supposed to be a park. Hmm. was supposed to be a it's park. So if today there is 
we our people are able to even dis, um, de de determine that oh in the next two two days there's going to be earthquake all over so everybody move into an open area there's no open area so these are the problems we devil in our country and our leaders travel back and forth they come in we have city engineers who have gone to school sat in classes some <laughs> of them have passed with A's they can't do anything about it do you think they are incompetent or they are just absolutely not doing what they're supposed not. to do absolutely not they are not incompetent I'm telling you on my way here I had a call from one contractor he was mad he was mad you understand they know what has to be done but the sheer will the sheer will to back them to do what has to be done it's not there it's lacking and sometimes when they are left on their own they get corrupted so yes. they know what is right I'm telling you and I I was asking I have a program later this evening I was asking the producer not to bring policy makers on the program he should bring um, technical men for instance if this thing occurs in Accra we don't speak to Kovanda boy mm -hmm. he has no clue the drainage system in Accra, he will probably have an idea. He has no clue. We okay. need the city engineer okay. to come and tell us the sizes of drains they've constructed and how the drains have been networked and what went wrong with the drainage network. Those are the things we should be looking at. But you know, you in yeah. the media also have your own agenda. Yeah. If <laughs> I mean, they've been having called to it. programs, I so <laughs> let my PR come. They say, no, 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 we want you yourself. I, I, I but it. there are some <laughs> of the cases my PR is more authoritative on them yeah. than I am. Right. So those are the issues that we face. All right. Then. So we'll, we'll take a break from here, and then when we come back, we'll talk more about flood and fire. This is still PM Express, and I am Martha Krenselakwa. I am talking flat and fire with Nanaya Wakwada of the Bureau of Public Safety and Derek Ekosam, who is my colleague here at Joy News. Um, Nanaya, there are issues. Whenever these issues come up, whenever we face problems like this, then we notice that there is a building on waterway. Then we notice someone doesn't have a permit to build somewhere or a structure has come up where it is not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Why does it seem like our system has broken down? Okay, um, I'll try and do justice to this. Um, with the issue of um, building in waterways and um, you know uh, permits with no permits, and yet people have built, we have called for a review of the temporary permit regime that the city authorities, you know, do uh, issue from time to time, pardon me. Uh, because we have seen also in this country that most structures that, you know, start up or uh, start rising, you know, under temporary permit covers end up becoming permanent permit, uh, permanent structures. I have seen a whole church, a big, big church near a railway line, and it's a temporary structure. I mean, I don't know when that building is, is going to come down. Is it built with cement blocks yes, or with wood? Yes, with cement blocks. Because cement blocks heavily decorated. Temporary structure. And it's a temporary structure. The permit giving them is a temporary permit. So we say that the whole permit regime the temporary permit regime mm. should be reviewed and, if possible, abolished because we have proved time and again that we are not capable of managing this temporary permit regime. So it doesn't have to be there for now. It doesn't have to be there later. Simple. Then we can have peace. I mean, if you look, I, I live, I've lived in Tema most of my life. I live sometime in La Paz. And you don't go to anywhere and find the place getting better in mm. this country of ours. I was in Sunyani sometime in 2008, and I went there again this year. The place is going bad. I mean, in this country of ours, things are going from bad to worse okay. when it should be from going from bad to good. 
Yes. Oh, from bad to better. And I'll, I'll hold you there because I have um, Frank Taki on the line, who is an urban planning expert. Hello, Frank. Yeah, hello, Jen. Welcome to Joy News and PM Express. Can you speak up a little? I can hardly hear Welcome you. to PM Express. Can you hear me now? Uh, I'm a bit faint, yes. Okay, so you've heard about um, the problem we are grappling with right now about the yes. flood yesterday and then the explosion that has left many dead. What's yes. your initial comment? I, my initial comment is uh, it's, uh, our, our vulture mentality and approach to this problem. It's, it's become an annual ritual. It's more mm -hmm. like a festival of floods and then uh, deaths and <laughs> we get a few politicians to go around and cry around it and then we forget about it and we come back the following year. I agree. This is a moral festival, so that's how I see it. But what's wrong with our um, city? Is our planning okay? Is our city well planned or we are not doing something right? Is it a matter we're of demolishing lot, something? We're not doing a lot right. We're not doing a lot right. And um, it fits into the overall planning of, of, the, of the city or non-planning of the city or inappropriate planning of the, of the city. Uh, but I like to tackle it, you know, separate the technical issues of whether the drains should be expanded, uh, which drains have not been called. All those things are more technical. Okay. That's the easier part. I think the more more worrying part for me is it's, it's a governance issue. I mean, who really is in mm -hmm. charge of drainage? Um, and who really controls uh, the issue of flooding? Um, and I think we, we've, we've actually delegated the governance issue around it. Um, somebody thinks it's an AMA issue. Mm -hmm. and Accra has, I mean, I think it was 16 districts now. Yes. But this is a cross-territorial issue. And if you tackle it in this fragmented manner, you're not going to get any results. Um, mm -hmm. There's part of it that belongs to AES, uh, part belongs to the assemblies, the, the urban roads are doing their roads and their side drains. So mm -hmm. there's a bit of a coordination issue. Now, mm -hmm. who really is at the center of it all? Mm -hmm. There has been a, an Accra drainage master plan. Uh, obviously, by now it must be at mode that the rate at which the city is falling, uh, the, the rate at which you have uncontrolled development, mm -hmm. necessarily at the peripheral areas um, mm -hmm. where, where we used to have uh, vegetative cover to slow down the, 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 the flow of um, storm water into the, the drains. Okay. Um, the, the, it's it's, it's, it's hydra-headed, but I think, I think it's first and foremost a, a governance issue. I think we don't really have a governance structure to really tackle, tackle the issue. Then you come to the technical challenges, you know. Um, I mean, what, what we are calling flooding, I mean, as a natural disaster, I would say no. These are more to do with... Uh, man-made self-inflicted yes. wounds that we're dealing with, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, because we are not doing something right, we are creating problems for ourselves. But how do we tackle yeah, this? I mean, it's, it's all the problems have got to do with people building on, on the natural water, water drainage channels, mm -hmm. uh, little, little buildings, buildings that are choking drains here and there, and then you have the po more like a ponding. Okay. Um, at the Odot, Odot channel, for example, just go through. That the, the, the amount of money that was spent on the Odot, Odot drain, mm -hmm. and yet it's uh, within a short period, it's, it's silted, and it's got to do with human habitation that interferes uh, with, with, with the yes. uh, function of the drain. Uh, mm -hmm. You have the, um, what do you call this, the new plant station. Mm -hmm. The whole channel along is full of informal uh, micro-enterprises that have been licensed to do what they're doing, the Odot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. donor fetus and what they discharge into the drain, yes. um, the new plant station, the what they discharge is. into the drain, mm -hmm. and the all of that. This, these are you know what I call uh, self-inflicted wounds. Okay. So I really don't see a simple solution. Mr. Uh, Taki. There must be a willingness mm -hmm. to want to do something about it yes. first and foremost. Yes. So if you have to recommend a very drastic measure <laughs> to help deal with this, what would it be? I think, I think the, the minimum we could do is to uh, immediately distill all those uh, drains, uh, clean up all this uh, encroachments on the, on the water pipe. It's, it's a political and social challenge, which I know mm -hmm. will not be done. So why talk about it? The people will sat and watch it happen over the years, and more and more people are building on these. When, we, when there were two or three structures, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. On what basis can you assume that they would do anything when you have m multiple structures on these? But if these are the challenges in the short term, we have to at least let the, the nature-given solutions be part of the solution. The areas that have been taken over in the uh, outer parts of Accra, which is where we have lost all the vegetative cover, 
-hmm. There's very little you can do. But at least the minimum we can do is to at least get the, the drains that we have functioning. The capacity of the other drain, for example, has shrunk. It's not performing to its full uh, capacity. Yes. Most of the drains are silted. So mm -hmm. let's tackle those immediate ones. Uh, people who have built on what on uh, waterways or close to drains and so who are living there, there there's, there's no much in, in the question of uh, let's have a human face to it and leave them, let them stay there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they stay there at the peril of their own death. So let's be bold and say, look, you cannot stay, live 50 meters uh, on the right hand side of these major drains and channels. And so we cannot build on those are the first, mm. first eight treatments that we have to do before we look at the bigger picture. You mentioned the loss of vegetation cover that would have slowed um, the water coming yes. into the drains. The water doesn't come straight from Accra. This, this waters are coming uphill and so on. It's, there's a, there's an, a downstream issue and then there's an upstream issue. So okay. the, the things you are seeing are coming from upstream, downstream. And we look at it, it's all happening just right here in, uh, within the AMA territory. Mm -hmm. That is the, the receiving end of it all. It ends somewhere, but it begins from somewhere. Now, if you slow down the flow, at least um, the water, the, the rotation slows down, takes part of the, of the storm water, and then slows down the, the flow of the water into the city. But I, I was actually asking if we are developing, because I know most of these um, development projects are impeding um, what the structures are, are supposed to be. So we are supposed to have these vegetation covers, we have depleted all of them, and we are developing building skyscrapers and all that. Are we not planning? For success, we are planning. We're kind of planning to fail. That's all we've been doing no, all this, along. These do not form part of this. The, the, the last time there was a comprehensive plan for Accra was in 1992. I think now the UNDP sponsored my plan. That plan was hardly implemented. That's what I'm saying. It's a governance issue. Preparing the plan is not the problem. There is an Accra drainage master plan. So plan, mm. plan preparation is just one stage of the process. Okay. Implementation and enforcement are the next stages out we feel uh, worthy to, to do. So you can prepare the plan and it becomes more like a library document, it's, it's, it, unless it's implemented and then somebody monitors and enforces. Are we implementing anything now? Pardon? Are we implementing anything now? No, 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 no. Most of the things that were covered on the, on, in the Accra Master Plan that covers drainage have not been implemented. The Accra Drainage Plan, Master Plan itself, has not fully been implemented. So clearly you've lost the battle there. Mr. Taki, please hold on. Nanaya, we are not implementing anything now <laughs> concerning our drains. Of course, if we were implementing... You we knew would... about that? No, I didn't know. This is okay. news to me. But it's news to me in the sense that for a fact, uh, I mean, if uh, Mr. Taki is speaking for a fact, I have no reason to doubt him considering what is evident on the ground. But that's why I mentioned that there are drains as that huge that saloon cars could drive in, in this country, in this city of ours. Why should we have flooding of this proportion? And why should it cost so much lives? Why should it cost us so much economically? I mean, I have no reason to doubt uh, Mr. Taki. Mr. Taki? Yes, I could hardly hear anything. I didn't, I didn't hear a single word of what he said, so I don't know what you're Oh, he doesn't <laughs> doubt you because you are speaking on authority, and so he's sure you know what you're talking about. That's what Nanaya is saying here. But I am surprised, I must confess. I'm very, very surprised that we are not implementing anything. Of it. Every year this thing happens to us, and then we you, go around. You, 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 you in, the, in the press houses are also part of the you, you only bring up the topic when there's, there's a disaster. You don't That's sustain it, so you don't put pressure on the politicians to get going so it's only when it happens and you join the festival that's also part of the problem so we all to blame here mr taki well you you take part of it, maybe five percent but it still adds to the cake you know <laughs> Say five critical percent. five percent, but that is very critical. Right, we are laughing critical. about this, but it's a very serious issue that every year we go back to it and then we do it now many have said people politicians or office holders are not willing to take the drastic measures like you are saying. Let's not say there should be a human face to this one. If you need to get rid of them, get rid of that one person and save the lives of the thousands who would have died when it rains right now. But we always try to put a human face to it because somebody is afraid of losing some votes in the next election or someone is afraid of being called a wicked person in the next election. So what do we do about it? How do we move from here? Hello? Hello. How do we move from where? Yes, 
to you, Mr. Taki. Why don't you go and contest the election yourself and then do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> How do we move from here? I want us to move away from the festival, you call mm -hmm. it. So that we can have real solutions for you're our problems. To the, you're talking to the, to the wrong person. I'm already converted. This, this is, I'm not saying it's a governance issue. Mm -hmm. There are people who have been appointed in leadership positions. They've taken the, the, the mandate is clearly not uh, mine mandate. For example, I mean, if you read the the governance structures, there's an institution in charge of this. There are people appointed, and so these things must work. I mean, that's the first and foremost thing. There must be a, a level of coordination. Now we have a unit called the Regional Coordinating Council. It doesn't yes. work technically. Uh, we're just supposed to coordinate the, all the system districts so that they harmonize their plans. Then mm. it's a cross-sectorial, a cross-territory issue. It's, it doesn't mm. really belong to the waters that be coming from uh, the, maybe the uh, Gas South District and ending in uh, AMA. But there, there has to be a certain function to be played by each each party to ensure that uh, we get a, drainage, a complete drainage solution. Okay. So, so all these things don't even exist. The Regional Community Council on paper exists, but there's no tanker capacity mm. to do the kind of coordination we are talking about. Okay. So it's more like a fragmented uh, approach to uh, a cross-territorial issue, uh, where really, uh, several institutions come to play. Uh, the Ghana, the uh, hydro section of AESL is part of it. Uh, that's under the Ministry of Works and Housing. Okay. The assemblies are part of it, the Ministry of Roads and so how do you get all of these things working together as a, a unified solution to a problem mm -hmm. that is hydra-headed? Okay. Echo. Yes. Mr. Taki says you're one of the <laughs> many units mm -hmm. that are supposed to work and make sure the system works. How are you going to help solve this? Well, um, we started this project last year called Clean Communities, and um, it's something that we are going on with. You know, for me, I think that it starts with all of us, in as much as we would expect somebody of a high authority to get the job done. I think that as, as citizens, we have a lot to do. For example, if your rubbish is fo um, filled up, you don't empty your bin into the next drain. That is what we do. And so you realize that the drains are filled up not because um, some sand was poured into it, but because we have human excreta, we have rubbish being poured in there. And I I'll tell you something. The Ministry of um, Local Government and Rural Development has a section under it that is supposed to combat all of this, but it's under resourced. It doesn't have enough funds to fight all, all of that. Then the rubbish is filled up at a place, and there's no money to pay the truck uh, driver to go pick but it up. But that is Nanayao's problem that if you have a unit that says it mm -hmm. is under resourced to work, there is no need to have anybody there withdrawing so then you let salaries them go home. at the end you let them go of home. But month. I think that we'll also have to be educated. And, 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 and I think I'll side with Mr. Taki on one thing. The media also has a role to play. We need to do a constant education and make sure that people know what is right. They have to do what is right. We don't only have to wait till these issues come up and then we talk about them. I mean, you can't force us to a large extent. The issues keep coming up. There are various issues every day. And so maybe it's time to talk about flats. And so we'll talk about flats until the right things are done. So we don't really care about the solution. Well, well, we do care, and that's achieving. A that's the reason. A we, goal. That's the reason we we, we we broadcast most most of these things. We don't broadcast because we just want to talk about the news. We broadcast the news because people have to know what is going on. People have to know that well, you have to do what is right. And I think that another thing we have to do is to let the citizens know that, um, as Nanayao said, you have to hold the people accountable. You have been put there to perform a task. If you are not performing the task, you have no business being there. You have to go home. Elsewhere, a lot of people have re would have resigned by now. But here, they are going out giving cosmetic speeches and letting people know that I care for you, when indeed they don't really care for the people. They are, they, they are, I said they are condolences. They, they are going <laughs> around. They are still touring the areas. When they are done, you hear from them. But Nanea, educate me on this. Which one should come first? I've seen so many communities that don't have drains. But they are complete communities. They don't have the park you're talking about. They don't have the basic facilities I expect in a community. But they are full-fledged communities. Well, unfortunately, um, normally around set times, I try as much as I can to keep the discussion really narrowed down to a certain core, one place that I can really hit and hit and hit and get results. Um, where you're taking us to right now, um, I'm going to open it up and everybody is going to see that, oh, we are not yet ready to finish <laughs> this thing. You know, because we live in a country where elsewhere developments move ahead 
of settlements. Okay. But in our country, it's the reverse. Settlements mm. move before developments okay. follow. And because of that, we have all the problems we have. Because in this instance, um, I am wait I'm waiting to hear that maybe there's been serious floods at uh, East Legon or mm -hmm. maybe somewhere in the Trasaco Valley or somewhere. I'm just waiting. And I think along the line, I heard someone say something that happened at Trasaco, I was shocked. And I'm like, what? Because I c if I hear of severe flooding at Trasaco, I'll be really worried. I'll be worried. And I'll begin to question the competence of our engineers for a community that's supposed to be properly Plant. So, but look at where these things are happening. They are happening in places where city authorities virtually sat down and allowed mm. things to deteriorate, people to settle anywhere, anyhow. You see at the end of the motorway um, in Accra, around what do you call that? Around the mall. See, when you are coming from Tema, Tetekwashi, on your right hand side, there's a taxi station springing up. These people will buy ice water, where would they throw the ice water? They will eat, where would they throw it? And they are there posting a real risk to motorists using the motorway joining the N1. But they are there. You wait and let some driver, you know, God forbid, just drive into them and let people die. Then you see how every, all of a sudden we wake up. And then we will see that, oh, there's a taxi rank here. It shouldn't be there. And da, 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 da. So That's we look on now. So we look, look on, on and let yes. This and even if tomorrow we decide that we want to take these people from there, they will begin to ask you to give them a place. Because yes. I, my father was a taxi driver. I took over from my father as a taxi driver at this place. How dare you come ask me and to go elsewhere? Demands. So give me a place. They will make demands, and then it will enter into the political yes. and governance realm. Mm -hmm. And then they will say, Mundiawam, because I need their votes. Okay. So we need the technical people to begin to do their work. Why, if Uko Van der Poy, permit me to just call him by that, because that's what people, everybody affectionately call him by, he's a doctor. If Dr. Van Napoy gets on the street, his men, to go and clear and demolish things on the, in, in waterways and all that. People are going to begin to point fingers at President Mahama. People yes. are going to begin to threaten him with votes. Yes. And even if he personally mm. will not budge, his party will bring pressure to bear on him. Yes. We were here, we've seen it in other it's administrations, several administrations. Mm -hmm. The guy before Uko was a very good guy, one brilliant guy. He was a stammerer, very, yes. very good. Stanley Ajib Blanksen. Fantastic. What happened to him? Hmm. At some point, it, it was a decree from the presidency. Go back into the streets. Mm -hmm. Stanley, relax. Okay. That's what happened. So we shouldn't even go into that realm of whether development comes before the people or settlement go before the people. Okay. The fact is that whichever one goes there first, what is right must be done right. Mm. Because at the end of the day, all the politicians who come around and come and talk, uh, my friend said, cosmetic speeches, come yes. and make cosmetic speeches mm. and go back, will pay for it, but they are not going to pay for it okay. now. They are going to continue to enjoy their booty until several years later. Mm. So why should we sit down? But we are paying now. Mm -hmm. So why should we sit down and let these things okay? Yesterday, there were people in traffic for up to six hours yes. burning fuel. Fuel that we use CDs to go and buy. Yes. But little does all of us know that it's because of this fuel that we are taking CDs to go and buy. That is why today the dollar is one to four. Mr. Frantaki, are you still with us? Well, you haven't dispatched me yet, have you? Mr. Taki, <laughs> thanks for staying with us. Um, Nanea raised um, an important point that in our parts of the world, settlements go ahead of development. And that is the bane of our problem. Well, I mean, it shouldn't be so. Uh, if you have a town planning department that is functioning best practice would not allow that because it is not functioning that is why it's remained like this uh, but it's not something that we should uh, you know be proud of uh, this is not best practice 
So we are doing so many things wrong, and that is why we are at this point. I, I still maintain that this, you know, fundamentally, you know, if, for example, we had a system where the chief executives of these uh, assemblies, you know, mm -hmm. were elected, mm -hmm. you, the reason why mayors uh, succeed and uh, their systems work is you have to go to the electorate with a plan, okay. a plan for the city. Say, look, this, I'm contesting the London mayorship. This is my mm -hmm. plan for the area, you know, spell it out. And you are, you are held accountable for the plan that you present to the people and you, they vote on that basis. So if annually uh, my area has been flooded in Adabrako or Salam down, they would, mm -hmm. I would not vote for you the next time yes. round. Mm -hmm. When you have a, 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 the, the executives are appointed, it's a different ball game. You can actually run away around and then um, mm -hmm. as, as a will of the executive, you can still be there whether you are performing or not. Mm -hmm. there would, nobody can measure. But when you are through the electorate, then you submit your plan. Mm -hmm. and the plans will, will be verified and uh, people will vote on the performance and implementation of your plans. So if you do not implement the plans and we are still uh, being drowned, next year you come around, we're not going to vote for you. Yes. So if we have this um, system working for us, perhaps we'll get some development in, in our uh, parts of the world. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Frank Taki, who is an yes, urban planning you. expert. Yeah. Thank you for your time on PM Express. We take a break here. We'll be back for more. Thank you very much for staying with us on PM Express. I have Nanea Okwada and Derek Ekosam in the studio, and we are talking flood and fire. Nanea. Are you very sad about what is happening to Ghana? Obviously. Or you expected it? No, obviously, um, I'm sad. And I indicated that right when we started the program, that I'm saddened and very, very angry at what is happening to Ghana, my motherland. Look, the bureau, at the bureau, we get invitations outside. Sometimes we go and we meet people. Uh, experts, um, governance, experts, development, politicians, security, and we go there and we talk to them. We are able to match them boot for boot. I mean, knowledge to knowledge. And then, how would you feel moving into a conference hall and then some, your colleague having a presentation and then splashes on the board? There's this thing happening in Ghana. How would you feel? I mean, it's not very pleasant. And I, to date, I, the, kind of, the kinds of things that happen to us that are carried by the media, some of them embarrasses me. And so I still wonder how our politicians are able to go out there and walk shoulder high. It's just a job. I'll tell you, we were in the US um, sometime last with year. With no emotional attachments, I'm sure. Beg your pardon? For the politicians, it's just a job with no emotional attachment. Yeah, but that is absolutely wrong. It is immoral. It is very, very immoral. We in the U.S. sometime last year, around November, December, meeting deputy directors of public safety, Texas, Florida, and so on and so forth. And then one morning, I see a bank manager, Roberts have shot a bank manager, and then somebody splashes it on his, in his presentation. And then they ask you, so how do you do it in your country? What is, is there any cold case program? And then you are sitting there. So some of these things are really embarrassing. And for me, I still wonder how they work shoulder high when they go out. Because for me, it's so embarrassing. Okay. So, so embarrassing. So some of these offices are political offices. So whatever you do, they are going to be appointed to these offices. But you raised... Um, an important point from the beginning that if you have your own way a NADMO boss will have certain qualities. What do you expect of a NADMO boss? What are the qualities? Well, I, I mentioned earlier that if you have a, a boss of such an organization who is thinking like you and I, he is not fit to be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, just taking the day by it, not looking what's going to happen tomorrow, um, what is in store for the people in that area, in this area. He's not fit to be there. He cannot think like you and I. That's exactly what I'm saying. He doesn't have that privilege. He is supposed to always be ahead of us. He's supposed to be thinking, should the flats come, 
how is circle going to be like? What can I do about it, at least to minimize the impact? Look, I'm telling you again that if NADMO had done a proper coordination with the Meteor Services Department, what happened at the filling station would have been only but a dream. Wow. Probably, even if it could have happened, it, there would not be 96 or 70 or the it's figures being burning about. It will not happen. How many people died, perished in the stadium disaster? We are nearing that figure. We are nearing that figure for yes. heaven's sake. And we shouldn't sit down there and tell ourselves we have a national disaster management organization. What are you going to manage about a dead person? What are you going to manage? I mean, that, those are the parts that hurt so much. That, so uh, I, I just have to stop myself Nanea from getting so emotional. <laughs> sad and so emotional about the whole topic. But what are you taking from this? Well, I because think that we are expecting more rains, according to um, Matthew, so we should brace ourselves for it. Well, I think that we should um, change it from NADMO to NADPO, National Disaster Prevention Organization. <laughs> then they'd rather prevent disasters than to sit there and wait for no, it to happen. No, wait. They, I they heard, I, over, I, I listened mm -hmm. to one interview mm -hmm. earlier today, and the presenter asked the Accra mayor, mm -hmm. Dr. Oko Van der Poy, mm -hmm. what he has been presiding over disasters for the mm. past seven years. And he said, it's a natural disaster. There is nothing I can do about it. It's natural, yes, we admit. The rains are of a natural cause. But if the drains had been desalted, if we didn't have buildings... If we have appropriate drains to start with. And if we didn't have buildings and waterways, we could have prevented this. Because no matter how much water, no matter the volume that comes out, they would have had a way to go out. They wouldn't have being on the streets and cause people so much havoc that if you, if you stay at Kaswa, you'll either, you'll either have to put up with somebody here in town or just hover around and make sure that you are safe. People were thinking of their phones above their lives. They were thinking of being safe because they had something on them, something valuable that may be lost when somebody attacks them. We should perform better than we do now. As citizens, let's make sure that we don't throw rubbish into our drains. Mm -hmm. If there's a drain close to you that is filled up, just get a shovel a and take the water, um, yeah. take, take the sand out. If you don't have a drain around, you construct one. We don't always have to depend on government to make things right. Okay, and, and just a small the final point, Yes, just a small point on the natural disaster bit. I, I heard Mr. Taki sharing his opinion that it is self-inflicted. And indeed, I think it is self-inflicted. Look, there are countries that has experienced rain for days. But okay? the impact wasn't as bad. But the bad. impact wasn't as bad. And the, I, mean, I mean, I just don't know how to go about saying this without losing it. Because each time I try to go on and on, I, I'm losing it, you know. Don't. I can't hold it together. If the right things were done, and I keep saying that look at how empty the town was today. Look at how empty it was today. It took the power of the media. So if Nadmo had just been a little bit ahead proactive. of us, proactive, hmm. we would have minimized this. People would have been in a rush to get to their homes. People wouldn't have even come out of their offices. Mm -hmm. And we would have minimized this. So many people wouldn't have been clustered up in a filling station, for God's sake. So I think that it is a natural disaster, but we cannot call it a natural. The rain is natural, but what occurred, that disaster that occurred along the flood was self-inflicted. There is okay. no qualms about it. Thank you very much, Nanaya Akwada. He says he can't talk about this without losing it. I don't want him to lose it on PM Express. <laughs> and so we may continue this conversation another time and continue our advocacy to ensure that even if it rains, will be safe no matter where we find ourselves. Thanks for watching.